All right. Let's see. Okay, we're on. Who's in the Zoom room? Hello, Marlies. All right, let's see here. All right, let's get this thing set up. Test, test. Yeah. All right. Let's put this here. Get this closer. All right, everybody. We're going to get started here in a second. Ready to roll? Let's get this back. Put this down. Like that. Let me see if I can get this. Uh, yeah, we're already live. All right. Hang on. Let me. I'm gonna have to flip back. Go over here. See the comments. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? Let's see who we got. What's happening? Good to see everybody. Special show tonight. Okay. Yeah. We've got 49 people in the house. Let me just share this to the Sology Network and we'll get started. I don't know password. Let's see. I'm going to put it on your page. It wouldn't, it wouldn't let me tag you. For some reason, when I start the shows, it won't let me tag you. Then I can go back in there and it lets me do it. But I won't be able to do that till after the show. So I'll just That's share it to okay. your page. That works. Yeah, let's see. Let's go ahead and help Josh come out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> out of the starseed closet. All right. Okay, let's see. All right. Dang it. Yeah, I didn't recognize it. it. Must I don't know what that is. Maybe he has. I don't know. How weird is that? All right, we'll just have to do it later. Yeah, yeah that's no fine. biggie. Okay. That's fine. All right, let's get off of this for a minute. Okay, so let's get the, uh, the show started. Uh, thanks for coming back. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell everybody right now. Um, if you want to ask any questions. Go ahead and put them out. We don't usually do that, but I think, you know, it'd be good to get some questions in there if you guys have any questions. And uh, if we can get to them, we'll get to them. And if we can't, maybe the next time. So I guess that means I'm going to look over here real quick and see if anyone has any questions <laughs> before I have to think of one. All right. So, you know, what I, what I was thinking is that, um, um, you, when we first started talking, you mentioned very casually, you know, very matter of factly too, um, that, you know, you connect with other beings. Right. And you mentioned that, I think I even tried to, might have asked you this already at the end of that show, but, but anyway, you were talking about how sometimes they were scientists, sometimes they were philosophers, obviously they're from other planets. Uh, you said they didn't typically tell you their names. Uh, um, I mean, how, like how many of those encounters have you, do you think you've had and, and do they tell you where they're from or do they tell you anything other than? Uh, sometimes they tell me where they're from. Um, 
Jeez, as far as how many I've had, um, there's probably a couple hundred. Wow. Um, I don't really, like I said, I've not really ever been too concerned about names or anything. Mm -hmm. I can identify based off of energy. So, and a lot of times uh, the planetary energy will bleed over into their energy sum. And I can get an idea of where they're from based off of that as well. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So like the planetary consciousness is part, somehow part of them mm -hmm. and you pick up on it really, I guess, telepathically. Yes. Yeah, every planet has its own. Yeah. Well, every planet that sustains life is organic in its own way. They want you to move up. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Sorry. So, no, you're fine. I didn't mean to interrupt your flow. No, you're good. Um, <laughs> and so like, now you also talked about how sometimes they didn't like the fact that you could see them. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes when I get a got a uh, or when I do get a mental image of them, they uh, I, I don't know if it's surprise or desire to be like anonymous in mm -hmm. some areas, but a lot of times they're not not too happy about it. Yeah, and I, I'd have to assume it's a surprise thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we did talk about that, like walking up on an animal, mm -hmm. and both are in fear. Um, now, do you get the impression uh, with any of them that they understand there's a reason they're connecting with you? Or I think you said something about they're more just a conduit and it's there to be. Yeah, they're, they're more projecting the information out there for anybody who's, I guess, knows enough and is in tune enough to be able to yeah. pick it up. Okay. So it could be really like the same thing, like depending on my vibration i could walk out into the forest mm -hmm. and maybe come across a portal or some space that had let's say a wider level of information available and because of where i was where my frequency was i could pull from that that frequency line basically yes yeah so and the only difference here is it's a, it's a being seems to be a being mm -hmm. okay yes neil devaney says uh here right here he says uh what is your read on the timeline convergence currently in progress? Or, or let me just expand that a little bit because this is something we've yeah. talked about in these circles. I don't know. It's, you know, it's all being the same things being said. It's just a different language. But basically, there's been a, a school of thought or a feeling or a knowing that timelines keep collapsing and collapsing, mm -hmm. ultimately to one timeline. Yes. Is do you have a timeline on the timeline? Um, I I try to stay reached out between all of the timelines. Um, it's like I said in the last video, I try to keep, keep my eyes on the bigger picture. Uh -huh. So, and in doing that, I usually communicate with other, other me's on other timelines and other versions of myself in other dimensions. Uh, that's another thing that opens up when you get closer to that one. Wow. So your, your main network, your team, uh, you can identify that as just other aspects of yourself. Mm -hmm. So there's a kindred connection, there's a knowing, there's yes. a mutual. Wow. So what kind of, well, I mean, so they're giving you, or you're uh, gaining the information that you're seeking. Mm -hmm. Do they ever just come to you with information? Like say, Hey, mm -hmm. you need to know this. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Wow. Wow. And it's, it's not a, not like an alert going off on your phone or something. It, yeah. It'll just, pop up into my head yeah and i'll know it's important yeah and you know a lot of people and i love the fact that like you you keep your eyes on the big picture mm -hmm. and a lot of people and rightfully so you know um come you know to an awakening or to a certain level of awakening through like past life memories and mm -hmm. future life visitations and that type of thing right. and we and, and me included and we could get a little bit attached to it mm -hmm. but have any of these uh aspects of yourself told you anything like that um, no, before I started communicating with them, I did, uh, I did kind of gain access to, uh, past life memories. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I was in another dimension, I had come across, uh, it was a prison that the guardians kept and there were some beings in that prison. And I guess they recognized me from a previous life mm. and they called me by that name and it, 
triggered something in my memory field. Wow. And for those people that weren't here uh, last time and, and for those who are old like me and they can't remember, mm -hmm. <laughs> what can you tell me just this, what, what are the guardians? Uh, the guardians, at the time it was about seventh grade. I was probably 12 years old. And the Guardians were a group of kids around the same age as me. Mm -hmm. And they had discovered this uh, multidimensional uh, aspect of reality and how to travel across it right. through astral projection. Yeah. And it, it had probably been active for a year or two before I joined in, but I joined about 12, 12 years old. So, was, so, the, so the, Earth, the Earth version of the Guardians would be this group. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so I'm, a, I'm not assuming. It sounds like that that goes out into a multidimensionality, like you communicate with the different aspects of yourself that maybe some of these other people do. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. possible. Um, a lot of the stuff uh, that the Guardians learned as individuals, I mean, some of it we would communicate to each other and mm -hmm. teach each other, so there's a group growth, mm -hmm. but the Guardians on an individual level were very secretive. Yeah. So a lot of stuff that they discovered, a lot of experiences they had, they tended to keep to themselves for that yeah. reason. Yeah, yeah, wow, wow. And then there was a question too, <clears throat> um, and I think we brought this up last time too, but let's just restate it or reiterate it. Absolutely. Uh, and that's this dragon energy. Uh, yes. It's just getting like more and more intense and it's increasing and people are, are you know, really feeling it. Mm -hmm. um, any, any thoughts or further comments on that? Uh, well, it's like I said in the last video, uh, as far as I can tell, it's part of the uh, collapse of the timelines. Mm. And that's right. With the, with the timeline collapse, the dimensions are also getting closer. So it's easier to travel across those dimensions as well. So because of that, they're having an easier time reaching out and communicating with us. Right. And silly question number four. <laughs> oh, no uh, such thing as a silly I know, question. I know. <laughs> um, those dragons are aspects of ourselves? Um, yes. In a grander picture, they are an extension of us. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is an extension of itself and everything else. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even, even when it goes beyond the our greater dimensional galaxy into the multi-dimensions, all of those dimensions are just different aspects of each other. Yeah, exactly. And in terms of like this communication you're having or you have with other aspects of yourself, um, mm -hmm. how long has that been going on and is it getting more powerful? Um, well, I'm not a hundred percent sure when it started, mm -hmm. but I've, I've heard the voices for as long as I can remember. Wow. Um, I didn't really understand them until I started practicing with astral projection and later joined the Guardians. That's when I really started to understand kind of what was going on with those mm -hmm. voices. Yeah. So, Would you say uh, in retrospect that those voices were these aspects that you communicate with? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, some of them have been the same consistently throughout my life. Mm. So there's some that I guess, since they realized that I am able to open up to it at such an early age, they yeah. decided to continue attempting to communicate with me. What about like on a human level, like at the, jo well, at the Joshua level? <laughs> you know, what about like, um, do you ever get like intel um, or knowing or whatever that you're supposed to meet with certain people, like even collaborate? You know, I'm not you know, trying to like point this situation out, but just like guided to go mm -hmm. and connect with a group or people, that type of thing. Absolutely. Um, almost every move I make is guided in some way, shape or form. It's, uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, I try to keep my eyes on the bigger picture. And by looking at the bigger picture, I can also predict possibilities of what might happen. So I can kind of guide myself along that too. And they also communicate some guidance to me. Okay. So they're, they're like, it, um, you're operating or your discernment or your, your actions that you take, because you, you take these conscious actions. Mm -hmm. right? I remember you saying that on the last show, everything you do, mm -hmm. you're conscious of doing something. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. You're utilizing all that information. You're mm -hmm. utilizing your multidimensionality and living as a human, yes. making these choices, knowing they affect across all timelines and dimensions. Is, mm -hmm. Would that be accurate? That is correct. Cool. cool. Uh, had another question. Um, how do you astral travel? I think you covered that last time, but it was like at the beginning of what you started doing with the Guardians. Yeah. But uh, can you just kind of go through that again? If you do it any differently now? Yeah, no, now, now it is a little bit different. Um, in the past, I, uh, I uh, would just enter a meditative stance. I would astral project, but I would create a room inside my mind. And instead of astral projecting outwards, I would astral project into my mind. And then when I was there, I would form that doorway. And then I'd be able to walk through the doorway into another dimension. Wow. So, okay. So what, what would you say, I mean, other than how it sounds different, I mean, is there anything that we might want to take note of that marks the difference between seeking to uh, travel outside yourself versus inside? I haven't heard a lot of people talk about going inside. I mean, they talk about mm -hmm. in a cliche kind of way going inside, but right. um, what does that feel like? Um, it's like stepping into a pocket dimension that you're in control of. Mm. Uh, these, these bodies, we aren't just physically like controlling them. We're attached to them and they're capable of more than just physical feats that we know. Uh, they're capable of creating space inside themselves for us to hide away in, which a lot of people do without realizing it. That's why they close themselves off. Mm. And then you can also utilize that space in a positive manner by isolating yourself through meditation or something of the nature. Yeah. And a lot of times you can find just about any answer you need to in your life by going inward like wow. that. Yeah, this is getting good now. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, because if I think about it, you know, I think about like what we talked about last time, a lot of people in my age group talk about shadow work and having mm -hmm. to go work with their subconscious to remove the types of things mm -hmm. and places they close themselves off like you just described. Yeah. So whether they knew it or not, it sounds like we were going inside of ourselves and, mm -hmm. and unlocking these doors now. Uh, and then, of course, we mentioned this on the last show, too. A lot of people are hearing their body talk and going to that location and gaining information. But you, you're you actually exploring the inner verse inside of you, mm -hmm. uh, uh, consciously seeking certain certain things and creating. It yes. sounds like creating. Yes. Well, it's, it's like numerous people have said. Uh, anything that happens within you is reflected outside as well. Yeah. yeah. So any of those internal changes that you make, any of those little pocket dimension, so to speak, that you create inside of yourself, any yeah. manipulation to those, they're going to be reflected in our reality as well. Mm. So let's try to, let me try to come up with an example. <clears throat> so let's say that, um, cause I've never, I've never done that. I got to say that I've never like gone in there. I've gone inside, but I've never gone in like you do. Uh, and I went in, I go into myself tonight mm -hmm. and travel through my body until I, and I can already see it, <laughs> but uh, so I find this portal mm -hmm. or this, this, uh, dimensional space within this universe. Mm -hmm. And I go in and I can create, and the first impression I get is I can create without any fear. Yes. Like I'm, this is my, this yes. is my mini universe within Absolutely. the bigger universe. Absolutely. And what kind of thing would you do? I mean, in a situation like that, like, um, well, I mean, one of the one of the easy things to do is that'll make healing really easy. Like healing yourself in that manner, it becomes much easier. And another interesting thing that I've noticed as I've kind of just observed how the workings are mm -hmm. on an energy level, our universe mirrors us. Right. Right. So as you look in yourself as well, you'll get a better understanding of the yeah. universe. Yeah. And you'll be able to better understand your full potential. Yeah. Yeah. So I could go into a portal, this rectangular thing I'm looking at, go in there into this universe, which has got an infinite space. I can see just like other places I've been. Yes. And I can go in there with my, um, you know, the, the, the full expanse of my multidimensional one mind. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and utilize that energy chamber, our creation uh, womb or whatever, mm -hmm. to um, create in this dimension as a human being. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bet there's a lot of sacred geometry in that, and a lot of colors. There is. There yeah. is. Yeah. It gets it's very chromatic. <laughs> yeah. And Donna Schultz says, can others experience a planet you create? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's very rare that they find it themselves, but others can be guided there. And for example, like the planet that I created, because of the positioning that I gave it, it would actually be fairly easy for others to find. Not okay. to mention since, uh, since I've had that first video there have been numerous people like in my sleep that i've like when i'm asleep i'll astrally guide them and show them different things and explain things to them mm. it's i don't know if our viewers have been aware of it necessarily but they have been communicating with me and I've absolutely answering questions too so. uh i don't know if we've had as much traffic but i mean and i'm, I'm sure we're not alone i mean i've had for four or five years people now, I don't have recollection very often, right. but they would say, hey, you came in my dream last night, gave me yeah. a crystal, or you did this, or we did that. Yeah. Same happens with Morgan. We've had people mm -hmm. over the past year uh, say, you guys came to see me last night, you did some healing, and you know mm -hmm. all different stuff like that. Yeah, usually I don't remember it either. Oh, you don't? Not mm -hmm. usually. Okay. It's... uh. Because it's in dream state. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's a uh, higher self acting. Yeah. On your yeah. behalf at that point. Right on. Yeah, right on. And so like, uh, so we're like, say, based on the, the uh, transmission of the last show last Sunday, mm -hmm. there was a, there was a verbalization, obviously, at the 3D level, but there was also all this other stuff going out. Their pick, their other aspects are picking up that information, coming to see you and you're taking them into the planet. Yes. Basically. Yeah, that's very cool. Yes. Let's see here. Here's a, here's a question. How, uh, I have been on one of the ships, but I can't control myself. How can we control ourselves while we travel? Um, well, I'm not sure. Personally, I don't use ships. I'm not sure what exactly. Well, mean a lot. By that. Well, a lot of people. A lot of people. I say a lot. A significant number of people mm -hmm. talk about being brought onto starships. Okay. Okay. And uh, some people seem to have pretty strong recollections of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people, you know, it's more vague. Um, so I think that's what he's referring to. And he's saying when he gets on the, uh, the ship, he can't control, you know, okay. what's happening. Um, well, at that point, I would say it's just, it's more a matter of, I guess, willpower. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't, you don't give yourself an option of failure, essentially. Uh, you, it's kind of like forcing it to listen to you. Yeah. But I mean, it's an extension of you, so it has to listen. If it doesn't, then the reason it's not listening is because there's doubt within you. Yes. Or you don't truly yeah. want it to do that. Well, it makes sense. I mean, if you think about like dream state or lucid dream, mm -hmm. which until today, I would perceive as something happening outside my body in some way, like, right. like they talk about the silver cord and all mm -hmm. that. But based on what you're, <clears throat> the way you go inside yourself, that's a, actually almost like a good training mm -hmm. regimen because there's no fear there. It's your domain. So when you're in these other situations, which are really happening inside you too, I guess, yeah, then you're in control. Yeah, yes. that's very cool. Yeah. I wonder, um, I mean, okay, so kind of had a suggestion. You might have seen it. Uh, and, and you know what, Morgan and I do this. Yeah, you know, Morgan and I, we did it today. Um, you know, we connect and we just go up into the higher, a higher state or a higher dimension okay. uh, where there's more of us there, I guess. You know, we, and we work through stuff that way. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we can create that space now. How do you feel about that? Uh, or, or do I, you, does that even mind. jive with you? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I've necessarily tried anything like that. Um, it may be similar to along the lines of what the guardians would do because mm. we would meet up in the other dimension yeah. a lot of times and yeah. communicate and that stuff that way. But yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what we do. Yeah. So okay. it's just like, I could go there right now. 
Okay. Right? To that, um, you know. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. You look as much an ET in this one as you do up there. <laughs> Just kidding. That's uh, true. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that would be something to, to maybe work into later. That's okay. to do it live on, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a feeling we're gonna get there. And and if we do anything, I, I would I would think that, you know, we're both comfortable with we're not afraid to do whatever we could do oh. alone on camera. Yeah. You know. No, that doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, very cool. Um, what was, what was the next thing up here? Hang on. Oh, do you do activations like, um, for activations. yourself or other people? Like, 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 activating. like amp them up or, you know, oh, um, or clear something or I know. can, usually I don't. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it goes back to that, uh, free will thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, without permission, it's technically a transgression against free will. Yeah. And there's honestly not a whole lot of people that will give you permission to do something like that. Yeah. Simply because, I mean, humans commonly fear what they don't understand. Yeah. And that's one of those things that they don't. So if you had, I mean, if I, if I came to you and I said, mm -hmm. uh, is there anything you can do? I mean, like, you know, like, I guess if you're going to Holy Man, you'd say, can you give me a blessing? Or can you, you know, uh, do a whatever, like if it's, if it was a priestess, they might do some kind of whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if I came to you, I mean, do you do things like that for yourself? Do you like, mm -hmm. can you elevate yourself through activations and, and or other people? Yes, yes, I can. Um, I guess, I guess in that way, we're talking about the chakras, because yeah. that's what I focus on when I'm working on activations and stuff is I'll go through each of the chakras and okay. focus on them, make sure they're balanced out okay. and then energize them. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, that sounds very similar to what a lot of people have talked about uh, over the three or four years I've been involved with this. Mm -hmm. um, and and how about like in in front of groups? Like, have you ever like had a small group when you met with your friends or whatever, and and somebody said, you know, I'm going to bring this down and share it with you, that type of thing. Um, not really. Uh, the guardians didn't really they never really did anything as kind of like a display or yeah. anything yeah. like that um in fact any anything that could be considered showing off yeah. or display or yeah. anything like that we tend to yeah exactly yeah. stay away from that because it's it's straying into ego there um but yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I yeah. don't have any problem with like i mean i never really done it before but yeah. i have no problem doing yeah that. well i think what what the reason the question came up is because in this community mm -hmm. again it's like i said primarily 35 to 65 been around for a few years uh some people channel some people you know bring down transmissions or downloads or whatever and share and some people um give act give emit activations like mm -hmm. code and, and, I, and that may be something that's in our generation, yeah. because like we talked about in the last show, uh, the younger people don't seem to, they seem to be to communicating with a more singular universe mm -hmm. uh, and other, you know, characteristics that, that uh, tell me that they're, you know, it's obvious. They didn't have the conditioning. Maybe their DNA was in more alignment or something like that. Yeah. Well, one thing that, one thing I know I could do that would be pretty, probably be pretty easy mm -hmm. is I could formulate a kind of upgrade yeah and put it onto kind of like upgrade upload it to the network yeah and then anybody who wants it can consciously think i want to download that upload i want to download that and it'll download into them and because it's with magic there's no time mm. Really, there's no time at all. Time right. is the illusion that we're stuck in. Right. And that's what's falling apart. That's why the timelines are collapsing. But there is no time when it comes to magic. So not only can you cast into the future and into the past, but across infinite space as well. Yeah, yeah. And how would you do that? Would you just do it like by yourself when the show's over? Or do you do it right I, now? I could do it right now. Yeah. It, it'd just be a quick formulation would it be like a specific type of upgrade or? uh well that that kind of depends i mean i guess if there's anything specific that people are wanting yeah 
I could work that into it. Um, what I usually, what I'd most likely do though, without any direction is just to kind of general upload and energize. Yeah, that'd be good. And then, yeah. And then the explanation you could give us, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're ready. Yeah. Okay. If you're ready. All right. Let me. Things up a little bit. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty powerful. <laughs> uh, and, uh, it started at my head, now it's in my my root in Kundalini. <laughs> yep. No, that was very cool. I, as soon as you open your hands, after you popped your wrist and your yeah, mm -hmm. and you open your hands, I could feel the energy. You know, yeah. I was looking over here and I could feel the energy, and then it and then it just kept going. So it was almost like, um, well, like you just said, you were like programming, yeah, and I could almost like see the language. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't the human. I could, you know, no, it's, it up here. Yeah. it's the. I guess it would be the light language, which, yeah. Personally, I know there's been people that have asked about it. Personally, I don't speak it per se. I don't vocalize it. Yeah. I can read it and understand it, but it's, it's all. It, human words are sound waves can't convey the yeah. information properly yeah. that's what it boils down to and that's why i try not to worry about trying to vocalize it yeah because that's i've always found that extremely difficult for me yeah yeah absolutely yeah i was watching something today it was actually Corey good and i don't watch much of that stuff but the reason i was watching it is because he was talking about he wasn't talking about a story you know, the blue avians and the secret space and all that, nothing mm -hmm. that there's anything wrong with it. But he was talking about, he said, you know, of course we all do this. And he said, and there are some particular ones on the earth right now. And it sounded like a whole bunch of people that are doing what he's doing, what you're doing, you know, what many people are doing. They're, they're part of the puzzle. Yeah. And, uh, but he said that the, that coming in, it's pure, but, the minute you start to write it or speak it, it, it loses because it's going through these um, layers of perception mm -hmm. and, and uh, none of us are clean yet, you know, yeah. basically. So yeah. everybody um, perceives yeah. things differently on this 3d plane. Nothing's it. And it's because of prior experiences and current understanding, but nobody, nobody comes to terms with things quite the same way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what makes communication on this plane hard. It's one of the things I've struggled with my entire life. Yeah. yeah. Humans, I don't, I don't know. They don't, they don't seem to, uh, to communicate thoroughly. Yeah. Yeah. And true. That's I don't know true. If that's a lack of understanding or. Well, what you or could even say experience. You could even say they have a, a difficulty overall in mm -hmm. general of communicating truthfully. <laughs> that might yeah. cover that might yeah. cover those who who over who embellish and mm -hmm. exaggerate and those who suppress yeah, yeah that, that, would, that would cover all of it yeah is is there a is you know i know everything goes back to the one is there like a one frequency or resonance or tonality or hertz or that just like that's it you know um and the, that you've read into in dimension or here there is, but until you can expand your mind and get a get a better understanding, it's it's more like you're listening to everything at once. Mm. Like you're sitting in a lunchroom mm. and there's a thousand people in there and everybody's talking and you're hearing them all at once. Yeah. It's a lot like that. Yeah. And until you get a better understanding of the energy resonance and how it flows and how it interacts, then it's gonna you're not going to be able to translate it that well. Yeah. Yeah. And I can relate to that. What I, what I do, what I have noticed, and I talked to you about it last time, but it's really got an intensity since Sunday. Mm -hmm. For you probably had something to do with it. <laughs> <Whoops. But, laughs> what I've noticed is, first of all, and we talked about it last week, and somebody put it up a minute ago, are you getting bombarded by numbers? There's a 111. Mm -hmm. And um, 
the numbers have been coming in really all day long, every day, you know, that uh, all the different, um, you know, number arrangements and the, the doubles and all that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the tones have been very different, uh, like more tones. And, and then going back to what I asked you, I know there's times when there's like, almost like a harmonic thing, mm -hmm. like a harmonic balance. It's like ding, 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 ding. There's like five or six out there and they all go to one. Yeah. And you can actually hear it and you can hear the different ones in the one. Mm -hmm. I think that's a small version of what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's a scaled down version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh, the tones are a form of communication, just like everything mm -hmm. else. They seem to be, not, not everybody talks about it, but it seems to be pretty widespread. Um, well, and like I said, perception, everybody perceives things differently. So even though we could all be receiving the same information, the way we understand it might be different. Yeah. So yeah. like for me, I could get images or like concepts and other people could get numbers and you could get just emotions. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things. And yeah. that's, that's where communication and the group mentality really comes into play because putting that all together, we can really widen how much we know and how much we understand. So are you talking about like a, 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 a platform that uh, continues to add frequencies for a never expanding vibration? Uh, essentially. The, <laughs> that's solid. That's, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, uh, but, uh, no. that's essentially. But, it, but to me, that's like when that came to me, I understood that, that this little name or whatever you want to call it, whatever it was or is, energy was a small mirror of the universe. So therefore it had that characteristic of always bringing on more frequencies which seems yeah. like that's the equation of creation i guess because mm -hmm. it's always expanding so there's got to be bursts rebirths and that type of thing absolutely uh okay here we go um so so morgan and i i told you what we do every night mm -hmm. and it's <clears throat> quite a, over the last few months and it gets very intense sometimes we have our hands together she's getting coded Mm -hmm. a, like electric code yeah and and it's like morse code like cosmic okay. morse code um and i think we've actually been told this is direct code like like you were talking about a minute ago with the programming mm -hmm. um i guess that's one of the ways that uh we pull in the information from our other aspects yes yeah. uh it's it's like a download uh the whole the whole of this reality not just what we perceive but the multi-dimensions and multi-timelines it's all it's all a program, essentially. It's a biological, organic program. And it's, I guess you could call it quantum at that point. Because okay. it's, it's growing itself, it's expanding itself, and it's learning itself. Wow. And that's what we're a part of, what everything's a part of. Yeah. And by tapping into that, you can have access to anything. Wow. And you can also upload anything. Yeah, that's a good explanation because it isn't just a non-physical kind of thing. And I know we're limited in what we can conceive here, at least with the human brain. You know, and everybody's well, like I, you. Personally, <laughs> personally, I think that's a that's a human limitation too. What is uh, the belief that we're limited ah. by our physical forms? Mm. Just because our brains can't normally process mm. and understand these things doesn't mean we, in our current forms, are incapable of doing it. Yeah. It just means we have to break down those barriers and the limitations that we think we have. Well, and, and if this trip's about integrating the physical and the non-physical, mm -hmm. you know, polarities or whatever, and just what you described earlier, I mean, you, you are maybe a, a more advanced, expanded version of what a lot of people are slowly getting into, which is communicating with their multidimensional aspects, bringing it into a one mind, which includes this one, mm -hmm. which you just made a, a great point. It's not, lim it's not limited, mm -hmm. only that we think it's limited. So we can actually conceive all this because you're living proof and many people are coming into that. Yeah. How do you, how would you recommend um, to strengthen the communication uh, with our other aspects on other timelines and planets and such? Uh, really? Really, it all just boils down to practice and consistency. Um, the more you acknowledge it, the stronger it's going to get. Mm. And if you ignore it, that's obviously going to numb it. Yeah. But the more you acknowledge it, the more you work with it, and 
the more you experiment with it. That's another important thing too, is experimenting with the different things you can do. That's going to solidify your abilities and open up new avenues. It's like forming new uh, new neuron connections in the brain whenever you learn something new. Yeah. You just have to force those connections to form instead of yeah. reading someone else's stuff. Which takes us back into that inner or exploration that you talked about. Because mm -hmm. I can see where you could experiment. Yes. And if something didn't work, you just revert it back. Yeah, just take it back to where it was. Yeah. Yeah. Now, can you, or, or let me see, would there be anything, and I know we, I'm going to have to throw myself in there. We might be a little biased, but would there be anything of a higher priority than developing those relationships um, with our uh, with our other aspects? Um, well, that's hard to say because as the timelines collapse and as the dimensions come closer together, we're going to be forced closer to those other aspects of ourselves, anyways. Yeah. Uh, that's what's going to cause a lot of issues and confusion with a lot of people. They're mm. going to start getting bombarded with these different parts of them that they aren't used to. Yeah. Uh, like I said before, really, it's just staying open to it, realizing that what you know is not all that there is. Yeah. And if you fight it, it's going to fight back. That's you. You're fighting too, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Which makes total sense now that you brought in this other, you know, because of course, you know, as within, without and all that, but to really, to have that like hands-on explanation or, or let's say layman's term explanation, it really changes everything because, uh, okay, so if you look at people's experiences overall, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just saying, in, you know, what, what, anyway, what's been put out there, um, when they have uh, what we might call paranormal or non-physical encounters with disincarnated energies or however you want to put it, there is an element of fear and there's also an element of separation. So one thing that I'm picking up from you right now is that maybe, and, and you can correct me or add to it or whatever you want to do, maybe it might, one of the things that might help us would be to understand that what's coming at us is, uh, probably is is ourselves or are there exceptions uh no it's when it boils down to it it all it's all an extension yeah. of yourself yeah. so anything that comes your way is well really you're pulling it to you yeah so and it may look like it's another person mm -hmm. doing it or putting a spell on you or whatever the case is but it's actually you yeah and in in some type of collaboration at mm -hmm. some level, but uh, but it sounds to me like that might be a good rule for the road is not to fear anything that comes your way, which could be through images or visitation or hearing some voices or whatever. Yeah, uh, we might we but really, I mean that that to me, I don't I don't know. To me, that's maybe it sounds like a little fast track thing, but it just sounds like that that's a pretty open and shut case. Whatever comes to me now, especially with these energies now, is me. Yeah, and I can start. To, yeah. it, it does. It does. Like it is a, essentially an open shut case. Like it's it's pretty, pretty standard on its like how it works. Yeah. But when it gets put into practice, it, you'll find it's a. It can be a lot more difficult than it initially seems. You mean as far as trying to integrate with the, mm -hmm. these ex, well what we what we perceived as external that are actually internal. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've got to you've got to come to terms with the fact that. That is just as an extension of you. This, yeah. this is not you. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to release that sense of self. Yeah. So it's 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 kind of weird because it's like the inverse of shadow work. Mm -hmm. Shadow work is like a very is, well, and I'm just describe it metaphorically, like a very physical, un un, uh, you know, shedding, you know, searching and shedding and integrating and dealing with it. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of human emotion involved with it. Right. But but so let's just call it your subconscious. Mm -hmm. what you talked about that universe with all these little doors and the universes and all that and so these external things are actually kind of in a physicality even though we might have considered them non-physical but it's kind of a physicality mm -hmm. because it looks like it's outside of you when actually it's just a projection from what you're what you have or haven't or what, what you've called to you from yes. inside yeah 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 that's very very cool and and if people well let's say that we want to strengthen our ability to to um, know, I guess, or can well, yeah, to know 
what our higher self is trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Is is there a way? Is would that be the same thing? Just to just uh, to essentially, because um, when you get down to it, uh, your higher self is not just you, but I mean, it's it's your subconscious, mm -hmm. and that subconscious is essentially the same across all the timelines, across all versions of yourself. Uh, that's the connection to the higher self, and that's I use that connection to communicate with the other versions of me. I communicate to them through my higher self. Okay, so uh, explain to me this because I may have missed something. There's there's the human. Yes. Well, we just use you as an example. There's Joshua the human. Mm -hmm. There's a subconscious. There's the higher self, and there's a multi-dimensional aspects. Well, what the role? subconscious is the higher self. That's what I thought you said. Yeah. The subconscious is the higher self. Yeah. There's no Whoa. such thing as a subconscious and a conscious mind. Whoa. That's, Humans created yeah. that barrier because of the sense of self. Yeah. The subconscious is the higher self. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's uh, something to contemplate. That brings up a lot, like inner child, you know, or I should say inner children. Yeah. <laughs> right yes uh wow that's uh, something to contemplate i've never heard anybody say the subconscious is the higher self but for some reason it totally resonates with me mm -hmm. which is why you're here thank you for dropping that little bit of wisdom oh it's my pleasure josh is gonna go into a rap now <laughs> <laughs> yeah no oh uh, wow. <laughs> uh we're not getting a lot of questions if you guys have any questions uh you know, put them up on the screen, but this is cool. Uh, yeah, let's get back to it. So now, these the we're we're collapsing timelines. Yes, it's it's a lot more obvious even this week than it was last Sunday, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was obvious last Sunday. But it's yes. yeah, this is trippy. Um, man, I mean, it, it's almost like are we just gonna like at some point skate into a, a more of a, a lucid dream state type feeling dimension? I mean, is it? I, I yeah. think so. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure how, yeah. but yeah. I think that's along the lines of what it's going to be like. It's, yeah. It's going to be more like a dream because this physical yeah. reality, when the time when time collapses, this physical reality as we know it, is not going to exist anymore. Yeah. And, and on that note, too, with like uh, Todd's simpleton mind of just like making these these rules of the road, refining okay. the rules of the simple rules of the road. It, you know, another thing I'm picking up from you is beyond the cliche and beyond the bullshit and just tough talk is to, is to not speak of death, you know, like in, in the way you talked about the mind's limited because we believe that the human part of us is limited. Yeah. The same would apply to death, wouldn't it? I mean, yes. like we shouldn't even be saying, Hey, I'm going to die. Hey, I'm such and such age. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, we shouldn't be talking in those terms because there's no way we could go into that dream state with that type of thing applying. I, I wouldn't think. No, no, there's any labels that you put on yourself will have to be shed. And if you don't shed them beforehand, they will be forced closed. Hmm. How would you advise collapsing timelines from a personal level? Um. Or Well, it's going to happen regardless. Yeah. Uh, so even if you don't do anything, it's going to collapse. Yeah. Um, one of the best ways that you can, I guess, collapse your timelines and your reality would be to get in touch first with your higher self. And then through that, your other aspects, the other versions of yourself. Uh, the closer you can bring all those versions of yourself together, the easier it's going to be and the quicker it's going to happen for you. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I can let that one sink in for a second. No problem. Um, yeah. And so, so in your communications with all your other aspects and your higher self, mm -hmm. The, I'm getting that the vast majority of that information, uh, if not all of it, is kind of focused on Josh and the human experience, or does it involve work that you do in other dimensions? Oh, no, it's it's very much an interdimensional thing. Mm -hmm. I, I do pay a lot of attention to this 
dimension and this reality mm. and the experiences I gain from it and the people I meet, the ones I communicate with, because this is, this is where everything's like congregating. This yeah. is the epitome of what's going to happen. Yeah. It's, it's going to be the most intense on this planet. So I try to, I try to keep it that in mind um but i do i very much pay attention to all of the other realities and dimensions and timelines because i've been using them to keep track of how the greater battle is going and how all of this collapse is playing out yeah 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 very good morgan said point of creation the current self and the higher self merges one will collapse the timeline Yep. So I guess that's really a, a short way of saying what you're talking about, which is strengthen the connections. Mm -hmm. And if you're going through the higher self and then to the rest of the branches on the tree, that's going to naturally draw yeah. everything closer yeah. to the higher self. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> yes, he is on um, Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, Joshua Pearson. Uh, and of course, everybody here will treat that with respect. Uh, wow. So where do we go from here? I mean, um, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, right now and then people, it's really popping, mm -hmm. you know, right now it's really popping, uh, okay. this month. And, uh, and I, I don't know, I mean, this solstice, do you, do you get any, uh, do you even go by dates or anything? Um, not, not really. I mean, when it comes to the human working things I do, mm -hmm. but as far as the energy and everything goes, I don't really, like, there's certain celestial events and things that tie in with that stuff. Yeah. Uh, because that's part of the mechanism and that's the mechanism determines how energy flows. Mm -hmm. So. So this, what we're looking at, like the, the, uh, the paths of the planetary and celestial objects and the different types of uh, uh, cyclical patterns, mm -hmm. okay is the is the uh what you were talking about earlier it is the the uh, the the mechanism of expansion like it's it's uh because you said it's it's got to grow it's trying to grow the, the, you said it's yeah. basically well, as it as it learns and expands itself it's going to expand because information takes up space we don't see it well most of the time we don't see it but it's right in front of our eyes all the time right right and that's that's the programming even this chair here it's programming yeah exactly exactly wow wow and so uh now are the the thing with the stars are the man, it's all good <laughs> that's actually talking to us <laughs> yeah. so yeah. i'm going to go back and see what was being said at that time um like this the, but you know, I look at the stars, I look at the stars, you know, totally different today. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't respect them because I know it's all me I'm looking at, but it's like, I don't know, it's almost like an overlay, mm -hmm. you know, to me. Yeah. Are there, are there distinct points on the planet that are aligned with these distinct points? Or I guess in the web of it all, they're all, it's yeah, all connected. I mean, there's, there are points on the planet and it's that's where uh, ancient astrology and all of that ancient uh, mass constructions like the pyramids and stuff like that it's all and uh, Stonehenge too mm -hmm. they're all astrologically placed specifically because of what uh, uh, star energy interactions they get mm -hmm. in that location through the yearly revolution as well as the uh, solar system moving through the yeah. uh, Milky Way uh, mechanism. Yeah. yeah, the procession I yeah. think is what they call it in astrology. Mm -hmm. when, when does doubt go away in the, in the human, you know, I mean, I guess doubt's just another name for fear? Essentially. Yeah. Essentially, it's a, it's a fear of being wrong. Yeah. And no one really wants to be wrong. Yeah. But then again, there's not really a right and wrong. Yeah, true. That's true. So it's it's kind of a it's kind of a null fear, and it's there's a lot of those, and they're they're in place in order to keep us from being able to expand and pay attention to what we need to. Yeah, yeah. By design, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah, by yeah. design. It's part of the uh, the temporal illusion. 
Yeah. And, and you don't have, I mean, you, you don't have any type of um, um, known tie to any specific star family lineage or anything like that, which I think you basically said isn't even, yeah. isn't even on your radar. You're actually on the outside looking in, basically. Yeah, I, I haven't identified any like specific ties or anything. Uh, I'm not real. I've never really been. It's just been a focus on accumulating information so that I can better understand things and explain them to others who don't understand them as well. Right on. Our sister T.L. Guadalupe had a question for you, but she hadn't put it up there yet. Are you going to um, hurry up Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. What were we just talking about? Uh, I lost my train. It's all right. We'll go to something yeah. else. Yeah, I guess yeah. that, con that concept was over. Oh, we were talking about the uh, the Star family, any type of oh. connection. But talking to you, all that stuff is just a story now. Well, I respect it and everything, but it's just like a story story. You know, well, It's almost like the, there's, I see like the, let's say the tree of life. You got a tree mm -hmm. trunk. And at the base of the tree trunk is this. Mm -hmm. And the trunk is the higher self and the branches are the multi-dimensional aspects. Right. And that's your universe, mm -hmm. you know, which is still grows. And we, nur we nurture the, the base of it. Mm -hmm. And I guess that would be my question. What, what is, what, what is pure love? Is pure love creation uh, energy, the only energy there is? Or, I mean, how, how do you look at that stuff? Because I know you kind of have a scientific spiritual slant. Yeah, it's a, uh... I mean, I know there were those, those concepts yeah. are difficult to yeah. explain um, in how I look at them, too, because I don't I don't know that I really see things quite the way that other people do. Um, like for like as far as love goes, like that's to me, that's more of a, a general acceptance. Mm hmm. And it comes from, it comes naturally from a realization that this person, no matter what they do, is me. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's not my current conscious perception, that's me. Yeah. And that's, I feel like that's what it truly boils down to. Yeah. It's just a, an acceptance that the reality is the way it is because you are what you are like if you want to change reality you change yourself what would you say to people yes and i totally get that yeah i totally get what you're saying what would you say to people who are i know we touched on this but i mean it, there just seems to be a more cut and dry situation and maybe that's just me i guess it is, this is you're me mm -hmm. <laughs> that's me but that are you know have the reptilians left and have the archons left and the cabal and the Illuminati and, and anything that's working against us. I mean, we're actually talking about or talking from a place, uh, having a conversation from a place of a higher awareness of that. And this sounds to me like that stuff for that stuff to go away. It's no different than us uh, stopping uh, ourselves when we're going to say the human aspect or the human mind, that aspect of us is limited. Mm -hmm. Like, it's there because we believe it's there. Essentially, um, essentially, it's um, it's part of it's part of this illusion's working. Uh, under normal circumstances, you cannot break a program from the inside, and that's what we've been doing as a hum as humans on this planet. We've been breaking this program from the inside, this uh, wow. time illusion, mm. and. By breaking that down, we're actually eliminating those aspects because they cannot exist in a higher self. Ah, uh, yeah. That's going to be interesting to see how that looks, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's going to be really, really uh, funky. But I, I like what you said, too. That kind of triggered something to me, or not triggered in a bad way, but mm -hmm. when you said it's it's not normally or it's never been... Uh, the code's never been broken or, uh, well, or, or uh, a realigned from the inside out? Under normal circumstances, okay. when you're inside of a program, mm -hmm. you can't break that program mm. because oh, you're limited you're to what the program gives you. Yes. 
Yes. And we've had so you're we've had to develop a way to reprogram the program so we could break it. it. It's like that Disney movie that came out in the 80s, Tron. Mm -hmm. I know they had a remake, but it's like yeah. that. So yeah. you're in the program mm -hmm. and, and you're trying to break the program while in the program, which is built to built to to sustain itself basically. yes yeah so it's a, it's a self-sufficient and wow. it it operates similar to a prison because its purpose is to keep us here yeah keep us in this illusion yeah and that's it's that's why this is one of the hardest universities because you have to ascend out of that program in order to be able to break it and understand it you and have to you have to oh that's you know, putting it in these scientific terms is a uh, is good. I like it. I do. I like it. Uh, so you you're in a program. You're all, you're inside the program, mm -hmm. and uh, wow, this is cool. And so you're you're uh, you're you're breaking it while in the program, which is sounds very difficult. Yes. And then I guess the the operating system mm -hmm. uh, or the motherboard is is contains the program. Yes. Right. And so the operating system is, somebody said uh, to my question earlier, is, let's see, is love conscious, is pure love consciousness? And is pure love and consciousness the same thing? Uh, well, I mean, technically, technically, but in that, in that same aspect, all pure emotions are also consciousness. Mm -hmm. You can't experience an emotion without being conscious yeah. of yourself. Yeah. Because if you're not conscious of yourself, then you don't know you're having an emotion. Yeah. Consciousness is consciousness. Yes. It just has all these different faces too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything is. Yes. Yeah, this is this is trippy. And so I see like the the uh, the motherboard or the body electric or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. um, is the higher self, which is I guess is the is the higher self the one or source or um, well, the higher self is closer to the source. Okay. It, it's able to communicate directly to the source. Mm. And through the higher self, you can communicate directly to the source. Right on. Um, but the higher self is not, like the source, it's not in this program. Yes. The program that we're experiencing, we're only, it's, it's like we're partially in it because uh, our higher self projected a part of ourselves into it. Yes. And normally we wouldn't be able to break the program from the inside like we are. Yeah. But since we have communication with the higher self, since yeah. we can access that external information. Yeah. So we, we basically, yes, we basically went on a thrill seeking mission, but we, mm -hmm. but we got a, uh, what do you call it? Like the mountain climbers, we got a cord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We were smart enough to give ourselves a cord. Right? Yes. Uh oh, what happened here? All right, we keep didn't going. lose it, did we? No, no, we're good. Okay. We're, <laughs> we're going to be all right. I think. Let's see here. Yeah, I just got to turn this off. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Right on. Uh, I think I saw another question there. Let me see if I can re uh, get it back up here. What is that? Okay. Where are the programs stored, if not the subconscious mind? Uh, the program itself is stored in this physical reality. Okay. Uh, like I could, like if I wanted to read the program, I could hold my hand up, look at the energy and break it down to the code. Okay. And so the, the so, code is just the vibrations. Yeah. The, the, what we're, what we call reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is the program that you mm -hmm. talked about. Yes. We're in trying to break it. Yes. And this, this program, yeah. uh, through those that are technical, technologically oriented, it's like a, a virtual machine. Hmm. So the source is like its own computer. And this reality that we exist in is like a, a computer running on that operating system, but it's a virtual computer. Okay. So this program, even though it acts like a real program, a real operating system, yeah. it's not necessarily the real one. Yeah, exactly. It's, just a, vir it's, a, it's a virtual one. Okay. Okay. And so now, it exists within yeah. the greater truth. Yes. Within it. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I think I told you about Franco last week and he talks about the inverted matrix. Okay. I, don't know if, do you, I don't know if you remember I, that. I think you, 
I think maybe I, I didn't mention it. You mentioned okay, it. so somebody had asked the question, like, what is what does Josh think about it? And it's really what you just said. Okay, well, okay, the way you just said it, uh, I can I can explain it to you. So okay. basically, he says that there was an uh, an inverted 3D put into an organic program mm -hmm. that was not as difficult or, you know, that was whatever, uh, more in balance and harmony, but it was put in there by our own choice as a group. Uh, so we could raise the bar a little bit and gain more from it. Um, now he says that the projection of the inverted 3D mm -hmm. uh, ceases fully on the 21st of December. Uh, and this is a guy I told you that had a memory from the womb and several planetary um, full recall of several other planetary lives, probably very similar to you. I told him on the show the other day that uh, you could be his kid or he could, he could be your kid. But um, what I'm saying is, is that Franco says that there's a couple other people that points a, a similar type of intel, mm -hmm. say it a different way. And that the only thing playing from that point on in terms of the inverted 3D or the, you know, or the, what did you call it? Uh, the program within the program. Yeah, the virtual machine. The virtual machine uh, would be what we continue to play, mm -hmm. like what we ourselves continue to do. And the other thing you said, just as a sidebar note, is that the, that the ego was the vehicle for that inverted 3D. So that aspect okay. still lives, you know, and I, I'm not pushing this on you or anything, but. Well, that would make sense yeah. though, because the ego forms the sense of self. Okay, yeah. Exactly. Without, without yeah. ego, you have no sense of self. So are we going to fully lose our ego? Um, do, you, do you see that as being part of the process before we move into this? What, and I'm, well, you know, I mean, eventually we will. Okay. It's, I'm not sure at what stage it'll take place, but eventually we will. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like in this, uh, you know, like when we, we were saying a minute ago about, it, is it going to, what's it going to be like? You know, like a dream state, which I kind of resonates with me, and you said mm -hmm. you kind of resonate with that, but you really don't know. Um, yeah. It would seem like that. I don't know. I can't remember in dream state. Do I have an ego? I don't think I do. And just, well, in, I mean, just in, in you know, when like, you're, I guess, I guess when you're lucid dreaming, you're kind mm -hmm. of taking on a sense of a sense of ego. Yeah. But you still. I don't know. I mean, I guess if you perceive things and you recognize them not as you, then you do have a kind of sense of ego. You do have a sense of true. Self. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. So dream state only in the way it felt, not in actually the way it runs. Because that dream state. Well, I mean, it, it might be too. But yeah. Like I said, I'm not sure what what order these different stages are going to yeah. take process in. Yeah. Or what order they're going to go in. We keep losing that, but we're good. We're good. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any questions? We're an hour and 10 minutes into it. You want to wow. go a little bit longer? Uh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can go to like an hour and a half. If you guys have any questions, let me turn this off. I, I think the signal's lagging. That's what it is. Uh, somebody made the comment. Of course, everybody's talking about the full moon, 12, 12, uh, 21, 12, huge shift. Somebody made the comment, in all respect. Uh, why are these dates significant if time's an illusion? Uh, well, there's, these are good comments and good mm -hmm. questions. I mean, why, why, when do we stop paying attention to these? Yeah, I'm with this lady. When is when do we stop paying attention to these dates? You well, know, I mean, what's the difference between that? That's, that's and, kind of up to you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. as long as you pay attention to the dates and you focus on, oh, well, I have to wait this long before this gets here. Mm -hmm. You're never going to reach it. Yeah. Yeah. Because or, you're always looking at it being yeah. in the future. Yeah, or if I say 12-12, uh, you know, major shifts are going down or, you know, the earth's going to move or whatever. It's the same thing that you we talked about at the opening of the show when you said uh, it's it's our belief or our perception or mm -hmm. whatever that the human uh, mind, that aspect of us, is limit, uh, limited. Mm -hmm. It's no different. I mean, when are we going to, uh, I guess these are stupid questions because it's really whenever we want to. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an internal decision, yeah. but I mean, it'll, it'll happen when your higher self knows you're ready. Yeah. And that's, that's a matter of experience and information. So in the meantime, the important thing is to just 
study and learn yeah. and experience. Yeah. How could we at, at this, this group, Soulji, okay, you know, with, with so many people connected to it, you know, and, right. and gathering, and obviously they don't do it all at the same time, literally, right. but, but there is, there has to be, I would think, some type of portal or vortex that's been slowly created and expanded because I've seen it, we've seen it, um, but it just makes sense. How could we maximize uh, this portal, this vortex, with all these energies coming together, bearing in mind, as you so uh, perfectly put, that there is no time and magic. Mm -hmm. So how could we do that? I mean, do you have any ideas? I mean, um, attention, just paying attention to it should strengthen it. Mm. Uh, it's like, it's like with magic until hell until the past decade, it's really been kind of brushed under the rug. Nobody's really paid attention to it. Yeah. Nobody's really wanted to talk about it. But then as more people started to look into it, started to study it and try to understand it, it's expanded yeah and everybody else experiencing it and around it has expanded as well yeah it's uh, a form of creation yeah it it feels like what you're saying i i feel that it's like it, it well again you know the only dumb question is the, the one you didn't ask so i keep asking them but yeah. it's, it's almost like i'm asking the question and then as you start talking then it comes before you finish but it's just showing up, basically. Mm -hmm. Attention can be, you know, you know, check, you know, just bringing your energy there, whether yeah. you actually physically watch a live or whether you just send your energy there. No yeah. different than the the uh, what did you call it? The elevation that you just did a minute ago. Oh yeah, the upload. Upload. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah, and that's it works. It works great like that because there there is no real time. Well, you know. Uh, it's interesting. Um, this is all very interesting because, because the more I'm talking to you, the more I'm realizing that we're all holding the show up here. It ain't about, you know, I, and I'm not, hear me out. People mm -hmm. don't send me hate letters, but it's, it, 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 it's not about cleaning up mother earth. And I'm talking literally now, I'm not talking energetically, but it's not about, um, you know, getting so-and-so out of office or getting so-and-so in office or changing this social, uh, you know, this part of a society with social reform or political reform or financial reform and all that bullshit, right? Yeah. So it's really what we're allowing in our, in our experience. Mm -hmm. We can remove these aspects of the program anytime we want to. Yes. It's just a matter of, of checking ourselves and checking others. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want to be around yeah. people who are talking about, I'm going to die. Well, we all die. Well, bullshit. We don't yeah. die. We have some kind of opportunity here where we can actually be in the physical and not freaking die. Yes. You know what I mean? Uh, this lady asked, I'm sorry, I may have gone around. Oh, you're fine. I, don't, <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> oh, there was I, a, I thought there was a, well, yeah, I got to get back into the group. No, there was a good, qu there was a good question here, you know, and, and, and we respect them all, but is the government going to simulate an alien invasion? Now we're talking Project Blue Beam, you know, or whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, and if, if so, what is the best advice for the general public? Well, I mean, they've hmm. already simulated an uh, alien invasion, though. Uh, there, I can't remember what the War of the Worlds. That's what it was, and it was a radio show. And it yeah. was before TV came out. Yeah, it was in the thirties. Yeah, <laughs> it was a radio show. Yeah. And everybody lost their shit. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody would go outside and nobody would even check into it. So, I mean, they have already tried it. Yeah. They've measured the panic level. From yeah. It. Yeah. And I don't think that they're going to try it again unless mm -hmm. they're sure that there's been enough change that it's going to change like how people react to it. Yeah. Like, for example, through the uh, movies and stuff, there's been a massive increase in the number of sci-fi movies, the alien space travel, mm -hmm. yeah. different worlds, that's been increasing. Yeah. And what it is, is they're preparing our minds for it. Yeah. Or trying to prepare the general population for it. Which, which whatever comes is, I mean, ultimately we're all doing this. Yes. I mean, but, uh, but I guess, you know, yeah, I get what you're saying. I'm, I'm going to go back to what I, I the rant. <laughs> yeah. Just, 
you know, like, hey, you know what? That's not part of my universe. If it happens, that's not part of my universe. Yeah. You know, it, one of the things that I'm starting to to feel in the physicality and this merging of the physical and the non-physical. Okay, so I would describe it like this: like, say Morgan and I have like a field of energy, mm-hmm. and that field of energy is, let's just say, whatever, you know, five D. Now we pop in and out of it because we go into doubt. We talk about we're going to die or, you know, these things that we've limited or the, or the human brain uh, is limited or the mind, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, but th- that's, there's actually, these are all over the world with individuals, with couples, with mm-hmm. groups, and they're actually getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Yes. I would think. Yes. Now a couple People of, are stepping out of them less. Yeah. Like you. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, and, and when you do that, it lights everybody up. Uh, there was evidently a couple of questions <clears throat> we've never, I don't, I know we've not asked you about this. Uh, there was a couple of questions about what people refer to as twin flames mm-hmm. or, or, uh, uh, consorts, divine consorts. Um, and I guess they had questions and you may, we went, we may have asked you this last time, but, uh, what's your take on, I guess that's, yeah, okay. Let me rephrase it. Mm-hmm. There's a program, a virtual program running. We're breaking it from the inside because we're because we have the ability to connect to our higher self and therefore source mm-hmm. and of course everything goes with it from the branches of the tree yeah is i guess there is a program or programs mm-hmm. coming from that higher those higher uh outside of the virtual uh program mm-hmm. or op- whatever uh operating system that souls are implementing one of those might be what people call twin flames or, okay. or sacred union. Is that, would that be, okay. does that jive? I mean, are there different programs I like mean, Christ consciousness there's, or there's all kinds of different things. It's like I said in the last video, nothing's impossible. Yeah. Everything's possible. Um, it's, I guess, uh, I guess it's a form of, I guess it would be a form of upgrade. Yeah. Um, or like, are certain people um, carriers of an up, a specific upgrade? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I a know, template. I understand. Uh, like a template. Saying. Like a template put in put in place to, to you know to, uh, you know feed the uh, whatever the the, the mission, mm-hmm. to break the code basically. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a lot of talk about this uh, more recent generation. Mm. How they've either not been here before or they're just coming here with their memories or more information than others have had access to before. Uh, and they're, that's essentially what their purpose is, mm-hmm. is to help push things along because it's, yeah. it's coming up on the end of this program. This, this program has a limit. Yeah. We've, we're, we're pushing it to its limit. So we're not going to get to play here anymore. <laughs> Not in the way that we do now. Yeah, most yeah. likely. But but I but I guess you know they were a lot of people say okay what is a twin flame is it real da 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 and then what I'm getting what 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 I'm getting like for, and for talking with you and even you know even with my experience with Morgan we're here to do something right. and, and now the way you explain it I can kind of see because that's what we're doing we're communicating with our higher self mm-hmm. and then and then through the higher self the uh, the source the multi dimensional aspects of ourselves. There's more than one, so then it becomes right. like a third energy is created, and it, and it, uh, it but it has a, seems to to have a purpose of breaking the code of this this virtual thing that you're talking about this plane. Yes. Yeah. Which is you you are doing the same thing in your own way, and probably everybody else, I guess. Yes. And as far as the different like the twin flames, and probably even the uh, uh, well different upgrades that you can get from other entities or beings out there, they're tuned to more specific styles. Like there's, not everybody needs the same thing. Like I said earlier, when I did that upgrade, if I was gonna do something without direction, it would be a more generalized yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, energization. Uh, because everybody's a little bit different, their experiences are different and how they perceive things are different they require different experiences right. in order to achieve the same understanding as other people. Right. Right on. Right so on. they require different upgrades and that right. may be what it is. Yeah. And that's why some people have like what looks like 
skill, higher skills or abilities in a certain unique, mm -hmm. uh, you know, segment or genre or whatever. Yeah. And some, uh, some don't. Uh, yeah. I guess because like some things don't resonate to me at all. Um, and they're big for people, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, really big deals. And for me, yeah. it just doesn't, you know, same and then, here. And that's, that's a, that's a perception thing. Yeah. Here's a, here's a good one uh, from Gina, Gina Costa. Um, she wants to know about the structures of the universe slash cosmos slash multiverse, et cetera, and how they interact. Do you have any info on that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's not exactly easy to explain though. Uh, cause this is like, if you're going to visualize it, it moves beyond a 4d mm -hmm. it's cause the dimensions, the way that the way that the guardians describe them to each other mm -hmm. and new apprentices, new recruits is every timeline and dimension is like a string and all of them are going straight. Like most of them are parallel. Some of them intersect and mm -hmm. cross each other and stuff like that, obviously. But a lot of them are going the same way. And there is, at the same time, no space between them, but infinite space between them. Wow. And we called that uh, the abyss. Now, when you go into, like, say, one of those dimensions, it's broken down into those threads as well. And those are the different timelines. Yeah. And... Those also have a space between them that's both infinite and non-existent. And we call that one the void. So the abyss was the greater one, the void's the smaller one. Okay. The uh, dimensional one's the void. And a lot of guardians would call themselves void walkers because they cross between those timelines. Wow. And when you go into one of those timelines, like obviously you have the different uh, galaxies and each galaxy is its own organic mechanism that's creating and consuming energy and spreading that energy across the uh, universe, which includes all of the galaxies like the Milky Way. Uh, if you go even further into the Milky Way, the different solar systems are different cogs in that mechanism. Uh, mm -hmm. helping like, to create and move yeah. the energy around almost like gears in an old clock yeah right mm -hmm. yeah yeah of course multi-dimensional yes yeah, multi-dimensional yes uh eva, eva alta said is that the what you were describing is that like dna structure um it's similar but there's not it's more like a oh that's that's what I'm that's why I mean that it it's hard to kind of describe. Yeah. Because it's it's not I mean it is, but there's no real bridges between them. Yeah, yeah. So it has the basic like the, spiral structure. Yeah. But any bridges between them would be I guess formed connections by one of us traveling to those dimensions. Ah. So or those timelines. Mm. So if that was like uh, uh, assuming you're going to visualize it that way, yeah. then all of the timelines are connected in that manner, and all of the dimensions would also be connected in that manner. Yeah, there would be different bridges at different points. Yeah, cool. That's great. Well, that's a whole show right there. That yeah. that subject. Um, what about magic? Magic uh, is is magic the same thing as alchemy? Or, yes. Yeah. I would yeah there's so. uh there's as many different types of magic as there are beings in the universe. And I can say that because I've experienced it. I've traveled to other dimensions specifically to learn different types of magic. Um, heck, from this dimension alone, I've learned uh, uh, ancient Norse, the uh, Futhark runes, uh, which is supposedly, according to Norse mythology and the Druids, the language of nature. Mm. Because uh, you don't, as a druid, you don't make your runes. You find them. And then there's also a notion magic that I've looked at, which is angelic magic. Mm -hmm. And then there's alchemy, which I've extensively studied, which a lot of alchemy actually also transfers uh, 
uh, or translates into different like uh, Enochian magics and sacred geometry and stuff like that. A lot of magic is like religion. Yeah. It all basically says the same thing, but there's different methods to get there. Okay. Okay. So magic is magic. There's just, yeah, there's just uh, different perceptions. Of yeah. It. Everybody's, um, it sounds like you said uh, there's many forms of magic as there are beings in the universe. So basically everybody's, everybody is a magician. They yes. just have their own, their own magic. Yep. Yeah. Whatever works for you is what works. Yeah. And what about um, like, um, you know, magnetism, like, like say Morgan and I, mm -hmm. right? Whatever the story or is or isn't, you know, whether it be this incarnation, all you, whatever, whatever, who cares? What is that all about? Is that just two? Is that two fractals in that case? Two fractals or more, whatever, that are ha that happen to be in a certain frequency and they just come together and congeal. That's that's my best understanding yeah. of it. I've never really had what I could call an extremely successful relationship. So <laughs> I well, couldn't say for sure. Well, I mean, like, it, it could be, it could be, uh, you know, two friends or, or oh, platonic. Yeah, I'm just saying, uh, how did, I wonder how that works. I mean, it, you know, th there seems to be a lot of things happening along those lines and not just couples that are romantic, but, but platonic uh, situations, collaborations, groups. There's a lot of groups starting to form that really are starting to get uh, some traction and have some yeah. substance behind it. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess that's what that is. Maybe that's yeah, it, a, it, yeah. it's it's it must be because energies there a particular type of energy will try to accumulate more of its or a particular frequency will attempt to accumulate more of that frequency. Uh, it's, okay, it's a natural. Okay, thing. I see what it's you like mean. static attraction. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, very cool. Somebody said that. Ray Miller said that. Ray, you want to come on the show? <laughs> Give Morgan Lee a, a message, will you? Yeah. Yeah, man. So we've gone an hour and twenty nine minutes. I could go all night long. Mm -hmm. uh, I really could. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's such a you know again sixteen hundred shows, and I'm not trying to put any pressure on you. You know, somebody said, can you can you make him a regular? Um, <laughs> But um, it's interesting because each show that I do, and, and there's been, I guess, different phases, mm -hmm. but then it kind of got to a, a phase where it kind of reflected presence, you know, just like in every moment, like the, the last show was the best show, you kind of yeah. thing, like the, the last. So, but, it, but talking with you kind of provides an opportunity for fast track, I think, because you know, something that may sound as simple as, hey, you know what, there's no death, let's stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. Let's stop celebrating birthdays. Let's stop talking in terms of we're decaying, you know, whatever the case is. Or like you said, the limitation we put on our mind because we've been told that. Yeah. All these things can just go away if we stop. I mean, I know it sounds really simple, but is it that simple? We just stop acknowledging them. We stop, uh, like, for instance, say the financial system. Mm -hmm. Or say it's a job you don't like. Yeah. Well, that's not a good idea. I mean, a good example, but how would you, how would you, do you, do you, do you just block it out of your universal field? Do you transform it and then uh, keep it as part of your universal field? I mean, how do you... um, that depends. Uh, if I can see something that I can convert it into, then I will, I will convert it. But yeah. if, if I don't see anything that I find useful that I can convert it into and I can't find a use for it. Yeah. I I will just ignore it. I'll push it out of my, okay. my okay. attention. Wow. And it's like it's like uh the light manipulation I talked about before in the last video. Yeah. So uh, you just really. don't perceive yourself and you stop being perceived. Right. You yeah. stop perceiving these things and they stop existing to be perceived. Well, you know what? I think a lot of people can uh, can attest to having uh, flashes of that. Mm -hmm. I can think of a couple of things that happened even before I knew what the hell was going on. It had to do with financial stuff. And I just said, this is not part of my experience anymore. And the letters stopped coming. Yeah. You know, and, and every, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, our, uh, our friend uh, and partner and buddy, Paul Castaneda from uh, South Central LA, Gaia Man. 
uh, he says, can you do magic? Can you manipulate nature? He talked about on the last show being able to manipulate light, which I guess yes. is what? Yeah, it's, is it? it's like a base component of nature. Essentially yeah. it is, yeah. yeah. Um, and it is, it is possible to use magic to manipulate nature. Um, early on when I was a guardian, I experimented with uh, creating storms and controlling lightning strikes. And what I'd do is I'd break it down to the scientific aspect. I'd find out what scientifically caused a storm to accumulate in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And then I'd focus that in my mind to create it. Oh, wow. So, it's like it's like a it's like a, a, a rain in, dance. Yeah, I was gonna like say you like just the, you like just in, dance around yeah. and you just feel yeah. it falling on you, and it, yeah. it works the same way. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. I was just thinking the same thing, but I couldn't get it out. Mm -hmm. uh, rain dance. It's no different than that. Yeah. Uh, so so would you would you um, go into or that this was your way of experimenting? This is a way of your way of expanding and and. Um, refining your you know your power your yeah. magic basically mm -hmm. so what if you know we, we we do have these layers of perception and doubt and, blah, 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 and all that stuff yeah but we try so it's kind of hard to throw a blanket on anything and say okay this applies to everybody but if but if you were to to tell someone okay you want to you want to find your magic you want to start engaging and actualizing your magic and growing your magic how, what would you suggest uh, I would suggest attempting that internal, internal, uh, start moving, moving yeah. inside yourself. Get a get a good understanding of yourself. Yeah, um, and then it'll be whatever comes naturally to you. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of two movies now. The one is Tron, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen the new one, but I, oh, I saw the first. I saw the first one. Oh, yeah, dang. it was very good. Jeff Bridges, and the other one is. Uh, it was a uh, god. It was a, it was a movie where, and I think Dennis Quaid was in it, and they went they shrunk down a like a spaceship, mm -hmm. and they went into a body, mm -hmm. in inner inner space. I think is what it was called. Okay. And and that's kind of what I'm getting from you in terms of like okay, if you if you wanted to start to cultivate not just uh, your magic because it all goes with it, mm -hmm. to start traveling through your body. Yeah. It's like we travel through. And you uh, don't even have to travel through your body. Uh, if you just create a space in whatever spot you feel most comfortable in your body, like whether it be your mind or your heart or wherever, mm -hmm. you create a space in there. And it's mm -hmm. almost like meditating in that space as well. Yeah. You, you, med you go yeah. into a meditation, astral project inward, create that safe space, and yeah. then you meditate mm. again. Wow. And it, it helps solidify a connection to the higher self. Very cool. And from there, you can start pulling all kinds of information, start figuring out what's best for you and what you need to do. Right on, man. Right on, man. Well, I think we should uh, go celebrate a little bit. All right. And I really appreciate you. I really do. Oh, it's I really, my pleasure. It's a, I appreciate all I'm this. I'm like totally aligned with uh, what's happening in my life you're a part of it and it's just like what the fuck is going on excuse me everybody but like it's like wow like, effing wow and i know it's happening everywhere mm -hmm. and speaking of that last the last thing would be we left here um uh, friday so it would have been i believe thursday night and we had our you know typical uh you know busy week with the dimensional interdimensional all that stuff yeah had a couple of dragons come visit us and uh that was interesting um it really was but at okay. one point uh and we had kind of dozed off a little bit i don't think but it doesn't matter and it was around 2 2 2 30 in the morning mm -hmm. and this freaking thunder boom came from like 100 miles away and went you know mm -hmm. it, it, it was like six seven eight seconds long man it was wow. huge and it and at the time, she got the intel that this thing just broke open, like the, the, a new, another level, another gateway, which I guess maybe correlates with the 1212 and full moon on the 1212. Do you feel anything like that? Uh, like that specific incident? Well, I mean, do you stuff do you, like do you, that yeah. consistently? Yeah. Like it's not necessarily, I can't say it's all the time. 
but whenever they do come through, I do feel it. Um, last Thursday, there was something. Uh, there's been Thursday. That was it. There's been quite a bit of things that have been going on, and I've noticed an increase in like how often they happen too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it really feels like that. I mean, we've been saying this for you know a year because you you see things, and it's all relative to where you're at at the time. But yeah. oh my God, it's coming in faster. It's coming, coming in faster. But but right now, it's just like the numbers and the tones and the, and the, just the continuity with what you see out there with the with the work we do. Yeah. Um, you know, the synchronicities to, of coming together like this and, you know, just all mm -hmm. these things happening seems to be, I guess, uh, collapsing to the one timeline. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that one timeline, will that one timeline be, uh, you know, for this realm or, or I don't know how to put that, but with, with this, uh, I, I don't know, I guess what I'm saying is, will we see the earth convert, transform it, it itself transform? I think we will, and not just the earth, but us as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where I think everybody, everything, everybody, I think it's all going to start, well, it's already started to shift to its true form. Yeah. But I think it will take on its true form in the near future. Uh, it, like I said in the last video, too, uh, the guardians have been watching this for a while mm -hmm. as a possibility and as far as the guardians were concerned this was a threat because we didn't know what to expect from it i mean when all of the timelines collapse mm -hmm. dimensions come so close together that they're practically bumping into each other mm -hmm. you can't predict what's going to happen there yeah there's and it was it scared a lot of guardians yeah. and so a lot of them took it upon themselves to try to find a way to stop it or at least make sure it's not going to be a negative thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Which I would assume that they would have to approach from a, um, you know, from a place of, of uh, in a, you know, uh, intentionally integrating with whatever it is that they're dealing with, not like, you yeah. know, putting up walls and yeah. shooting things and, you know, mm -hmm. taking people out and stuff like that. So that's that's a good thing, yeah. and that and that says a lot too. I think for the creation, mm -hmm. which we all are, I guess you know, yeah. the creation actually melding the the mind, mm -hmm. you know, and the experiences, no different than what we're doing, really. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're taking this what we thought until today, mm -hmm. or, or at least I thought until today, mm -hmm. from a higher level. I'll say from a higher level, um, our this limitless human mind. Mm -hmm. is is uh doing what the like like you're talking about these guardians actually doing what they do is like to have the concern hey what's going to happen how can i help basically right and utilizing their multi-dimensional uh, aspects in the one beehive mind but mm -hmm. the human is the one consciously taking the steps it seems yes yeah very cool yeah well we're gonna go have a uh a coffee or yeah. something something <laughs> and uh thanks again and thank you everybody we appreciate it thank you for the love and support and thank you everything else and we'll do it again absolutely okay absolutely this We're, has been an amazing experience yeah we, well we could do it next sunday if you want to okay we'd have to check with morgan but i'm sure we could work that out yeah i don't have a problem with that all right man sounds good take care everybody i'm gonna turn you off now oh we had a couple of questions here but sorry about that in the chat room. I didn't see that. All right.